Okay, so this is part six of the tutorial, uh, and I would like to start with a happy news. I finally finished the PDF tutorial on all of this. It's available on the Barrett Group Research website. On the Barrett Research Group website, actually. <laughs> so I added a link in the description under the videos uh, if you want to take a look at that. It has much more detail than all of these video tutorials and many aspects that are not covered here. So in this tutorial, we'll actually have only two points to look at, it, which are the solvation effect and the batch files. So um, solvation effect. Uh, because in Gaussian, by default, all the calculations are done in gas phase, if you want to see how the solvent influences your results, you have to add a solvent cavity around your molecule. So you can do that in two, two ways. Basically, the explicit one is you physically draw the molecules in Avogadro. But this is very expensive computationally and not very accurate because you don't really know how many molecules of the solvent you have to add there to have a representative amount. The other way to do it is to add a sol solvent cavity um, implicitly. So basically, um, let's open Avogadro and say I'd like to work with formaldehyde. And I would I'd like to see how does the solvent uh, influence the optimization of the geometry and the frequency, right? So here in the root section, I hope you can see it well. Uh, after the, the calculation keyword, you have to add an additional keyword, uh, which is SCRF. Then you put an equal sign, open brackets, write solvent equals, and then you add any solvent that you want. So I add methanol, and I close the brackets. There's a whole list of solvents that are available in Gaussian for calculations, so you should check that on their website or in their reference manual, whichever you prefer. So that's the only additional thing you have to add to your uh, root section. What this does is that it creates a hypothetical kind of um, cavity around your molecule um, and it's solvent dependent, right? So whatever solvent you need, you add there. It's important to remember that the optimization of the geometry must be done in the same solvent as the other calculations. So if you optimize for gas phase and then you do a calculation in solvent, it's not going to be representative. So remember that. When you're done, you just click on Generate, and you can open that in Gaussian Run Your Calculation. Before doing that, I would actually want to first talk about batch files. And then we'll actually run calculations. So batch files are simply a text file that I have right here that just lists a different Gaussian jobs that will be done in a sequence nonstop automatically. So for instance, I have to do 10 calculations. I want to optimize the geometry of 10 molecules. Instead of sitting there and waiting for one job to be done to start another one manually, I can just create a batch file open it up in Gaussian, start the process, and then come back in, let's say, 10 hours, or leave it overnight, and in the morning come back, and oh, my job is done. So how to create a batch file? This is just a text file you open to Notepad or whatever you prefer, and then you have to keep the same format. So the first two lines must start with an exclamation mark. The first line is just a name of the batch file. You can write anything in there. Try to be more descriptive than just a random batch file. The second line indicates to Gaussian what do you want to start with. So if you want to start with the first thing on your list, you just write one here. If you want to start with the number 10, then write number 10. Doesn't matter. And all the rest is just the input file, .com, comma, space, and the name of the output file. I like to keep the input and the output names exactly the same so I don't confuse anything, but they can be different. So here I have three jobs that will be done one after the other without me interfering. 
I have water single point calculation, ethylene single point calculation, formaldehyde in methanol frequencies. It's very important that all of your files that are in the batch um, are in the same folder. So I put them in batch folder. I have the .bcf and I have all the input files here too. It's important to have all of them together. Otherwise, Gaussian won't be able to find them and will output an error. Make sure that the names that you put, sorry, that you write here correspond to the names of the input files. Otherwise, you'll have another error. So, now let's go into, oh, that's my wonderful tutorial. Ta -da! Uh, so now let's go into Gaussian and see how to open a batch file. So you go into File, Open, you go into your batch folder and open the BCF uh, file. It's important that it when you save it in Notepad, sometimes it makes it as a text file, so you have to make sure the extension is right. So when you click on Open, you should see this window, it's called Edit Batch Control List. Um, and make sure that you have the right files there. If you want to add something that you forgot to, you can click on the Add button. If you want to remove a file that you don't want to compute anymore, click on Delete. So when you're ready, you just click on Exit. And to start the process, you click on Process and Begin Process. And see my calculations started. Here you have processing 2 out of 3. Here you have the name of the current file that is being processed. Uh, and when this the batch data is just the name of the batch file that you're working with and the run progress is just like before basically um, you wait until it says process complete right so this is the only thing the rest is exactly the same as before so um, this is it you're done three out of three should almost be done okay so I'll stop it because you don't need to see the same output once again. The actual output does not change that much. So thank you for your attention and good luck.